ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعادنا الله منها يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I would also like to praise the Masjid, Masjid Abu Huraira and the committee of the Masjid as well as the management that has organized and always organized these wonderful occasions where the Muslim brothers and sisters in Islam meet together in the masjid and remind one another about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallah, thumma billah, thumma tallah, ayyuhal ikhwah, wal akhawat. We do not know how much khair that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And the greatest khair that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us is the khair of al-hidayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that gave us the guidance. The guidance that has not been given those who were so close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those who lived with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those who were king to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, next of king, those who had relationship with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those who lived with him exactly at the same time. Has anyone seen Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from here? Can someone raise his hand and say, I have seen the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The answer is no. But alhamdulillah, Allah is the one that has placed the love that we have for our Prophet in our hearts. But Abu Jahl, he saw the Prophet. He met the Prophet. He knew him from young age. Abu Lahab, he was his own uncle, the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He knew him before he was even born because he knew his father, Abdullah, because that was his brother. But what did Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reveal when it comes to Abu Lahab? A whole surah of the Quran. Tabbat yada Abu Lahab wa tab. ما أغنى عنه ماله وما كسب سيصلى نارا ذات لهب until the end of the surah look Abu Lahab look Abu Jahl look Abu Talib who was so close to the Prophet he supported the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم all his life from the day he was born until Abu Talib passed away and the Prophet was at the age of 50 years old he was supporting the Prophet. But guidance was not written for Abu Talib. But us, alhamdulillah, look, today is the eve of Christmas. But alhamdulillah, where are we now? We are in the masjid. But many people, many people, I think I got it wrong. It's just like one day before that, isn't it? Yes. So it's almost, we are almost there. But many people right now, what are they busy with? Remembering Allah or other things? But alhamdulillah, look at us. 
brothers and sisters, we have been picked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the one that brought us to the masjid. And alhamdulillah, we are in the masjid. We are reminding one another about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the topic that I'm going to talk about today, this topic is related to the masjid itself. The first question now is, what is a masjid? What is the meaning of the word masjid? Mosque. Our younger brothers and sisters, they have been hearing the word masjid since they were born. They might hear it from their fathers, their mothers, saying, we are going to the masjid. Maybe, but they do not understand what the masjid is. What does masjid mean in the first place? Yes, brother. The house of Allah. The house of Allah. Excellent. The house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, brother. Could it be also a place where you pray salah? Yes, a place where you pray salah. And inshallah ta'ala, what we're going to do today, we will define what masjid is. This brother, Jazahullah Khair. What's your name, brother? Ammar. Ammar, Jazahullah Khair. Where is Abu Ammar? I want to see Abu Ammar, the father of Ammar. Where is he? he is he? The, yes, mashallah. He's right at the back. Oh my God. <laughs> Where is his dad? He's just sitting there. Abu Ammar. Okay. Okay, we have two Ammaris, mashallah. Jazawallahu khair. That shows the love fathers have for their kids. That father has said, I am the father of Ammar. He's proud of his son. And he has the right to be proud of him. Because fathers, they love their kids. They love their sons. Why did I mention the name of Ammar? I have seen Ammar last night. He was sitting there, he was taking notes. This is the sign of Talib Ilm. This is a great sign to see a young brother who is sitting or a young sister who listens to talks and to lectures and take notes. Because this is very, very important. Because whatever we hear, we might not be able to memorize everything. But when we write the notes, we can go back to those notes and read over it later on. So, mashallah, brother Ammar, keep doing that work. And then, wallah, thumma billah, thumma tallah, soon you will see that you are more knowledgeable than other kids. And soon they will be asking you questions. Amar, what do you think about this? What is the ru Islamic ruling of this? And you will tell them. MashaAllah. And you will become a shaykh. Bi'inillahi ta'ala. So keep writing, MashaAllah, Amar. And Umm Ammar, if she's here, what's your second name? Amar? So there's no dispute over there as well. Because we don't want mothers fighting over. That is my Amar. No, no, that's my Amar. So we don't want that happening on the sister's side. So your second name is? Ammar Salim, yes. So the, your mother will know that now. Inshallah ta'ala. So that's, this is what it is. So bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, we will, what does a masjid, the word masjid, what does it mean? Linguistically, the word masjid is a place of prostration where the person actually makes the sujood. That's where masjid comes from. The brother also has mentioned another meaning that brother Jazahullah Khair, he said, a masjid is where we pray salah. But in reality, the masjid is far bigger than that. Masjid is far bigger than that. Masjid is a place of worship. But what does the word worship mean? Who can tell me the word worship, what it means? Yes, brother. Exactly. So it's like where you make dua, where you pray your salah. That's the word worship. Who can give me another definition of worship? Yes. Oh, mashallah, that is one of my favorite students. Mashallah. What was your name, brother? Bilal? What was Ammar. What? Oh, Ammar is a very special name. Yes, I know Ammar. I knew him from last year, mashallah, and the year before probably. He was hard working, Ammar as well. These two Ammars, mashallah, they, they deserve a lot of praise. Praise, alhamdulillah. Yes, what is your... Masha Allah, that is a beautiful answer that. Any action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, that is good one, that. Masha Allah. That looks like a great answer. But inshallah ta'ala, we're going to define what worship means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا That the masajid are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not work, 
do not associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to his worship. But what is ibadah? Unfortunately, most of us, we do not know the meaning of ibadah. Most of us, if we are asked what is ibadah, we may say part of ibadah. We may say giving sadaqah is ibadah. We may say that praying salah is ibadah and so on. But in reality, ibadah is far bigger than that. Ibadah is like the ulama have mentioned, ismun jami'un likulli ma yuhibbuhu allahu wa yardahu min al-aqwali wal-af'ali al-zahirati wal-batina. That is the comprehensive meaning of al-ibadah. What does that mean? Is ismun jami' is a name that encompasses. Is a name that encompasses what? لِكُلِّ مَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ وَيَرْضَهُ Everything like Ammar has said. Everything that Allah likes. مِنَ الْأَقْوَالِ Whether that is from the sayings, what you say. وَالْأَعْمَالِ Or the practical things that you do. Whether that is what? الظَّاهِرَةِ Whether it is an apparent action or saying or whether it is al-batina, the hidden things. Who can give me an act of worship which is hidden? An act of worship which is hidden. Nobody can see it. MashaAllah. What's your name, brother? Are you another Ammar? Okay. What's your name? Muhammad. MashaAllah. Yes, brother Muhammad. Giving sadaqah is an act of worship which is hidden. Maybe Amar doesn't agree with you. Okay, yes, Amar. Another one. Okay, praying during the night where no one can see you in the night. Just you yourself and no one else. There's a brother at the back. Yes, brother. Give me a hidden act, a hidden thing. Siam, yes, is an act which is hidden. What we mean hidden that nobody can see it. It's totally. If you are praying at home at night, mom might open the door. You might be praying in your room, and then she might hear your voice. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam. And mom would think maybe a thief is in the house. Okay, mom will come to the room and open that door and say, Oh, Alhamdulillah, Ammar is praying and she's going to feel the happiest woman in the world. Masha, that's how happy she's going to be when she sees her son or daughter praying the salah. So this is what hidden ibadah is. Give me another one. Yes, it's one that we have just mentioned. Yes, brother. Giving? Forgiving someone in your heart. Yes. Yes, I give me. Yes, quietly. Yes, also that's another hidden thing which is you cannot see. But I'm going to give you things that are very apparent, but they're still hidden. Do you know that al-mahabba, the love that you have for Allah, is an act which is hidden? That is an act of worship which is inside your heart. Can anyone tell someone who's sitting anywhere in this masjid whether they love Allah or not? Can anyone say that? We don't know. Inside your heart, nobody knows except Allah. What about someone? Al-Khawf. This is another act of worship. Fear. That fear is in your heart. Nobody can see whether you are fearful of Allah or not. It's something which is hidden. So these are the types of what? The types of ibadah that are hidden from the people. But I want to move on because we are talking about the role of the masjid. Once we understand the meaning of ibadah, we can understand that everything good, everything good that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, the masjid is a place for it. But unfortunately, as Muslims today, do we use the masjid the right way? The masjid is just for salah. Wallah, if you see most of the masjid in the world, people, as soon as they finish, assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum, sometimes you might not be even given the time to pray sunnah. The caretaker might say, please, I have an appointment with the doctor. Can you leave the masjid? Khalas, I'm going to lock up the masjid. Everyone, pray your sunnah in the house. Assalamu alaikum. And the masjid is locked. Khalas. But is the masjid for that? La. We'll talk about it inshallah ta'ala. What the masjid is all about. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. In the next part of the reminder inshallah ta'ala. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after he said wa anna al-masajid lillah fala tad'u ma'a Allah ahada he also mentioned the people that actually maintain the masjid what characteristics do you need to have for you to be someone who looks after the masjid someone who comes to the masjid someone who uses the masjid the right way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in surah At-Tawbah innama ya'muru masajid Allah man amana billahi wal yawm al akhir those who maintain and look after the masjid and come to the masjid and make the masjid a place where it is absolutely vibrant who are these people innama ya'muru masajid Allah man amana billahi these are the conditions these are the characteristics of people that come to the masjid and fill it up these are the people innama ya'muru masajid Allah man amana billahi those who believe in Allah. Those who what? Believe in Allah. What else do they believe? الآخر, they believe the day of judgment. Also, what else do they believe? After believing that Allah and his day of judgment, what else do they do? They offer prayer. They establish prayer, the five daily prayers. And they also give what? Charity. And then after that, what is it? They do not have fear of anyone except Allah. They have no fear of anyone. They come to the masjid all the time. They don't care what people say. You go to the masjid all the time. What did the Prophet wasallam has said among the seven people that Allah is going to give them the shade of Allah when there is no shade in the day of judgment except the shade of Allah وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسْجِدِ a man or a woman whose heart is so attached to the masjid there are certain people everywhere you go anywhere in the world any city in the world there are certain brothers whenever you go to that masjid they are there you will find them Wallah, when I first came to Toronto to Abu Huraira Masjid, there were brothers that I met the year 2011. And this year when I came back, and last year when I came back as well, these brothers are still in the masjid. Every time when I come to the masjid now, they are in the masjid. His, his heart is attached to the masjid. So if you are like that, what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you his shade in the day of judgment when there is no shade other than the shade of Allah. Yes? Yes, the seven types. You wrote them yesterday. What's your name, brother? Ahmad, mashallah. Excellent. Are you the brother of Ammar? Asha. <laughs> Barakallah feek. Well done. Mashallah, we have students of knowledge. And this is a great, uh, it makes me feel so happy and glad when I see young brothers who are taking notes. This is a great sign. This is a great sign that this child has the potential to become a sheikh, a knowledgeable person that people will benefit from him, inshallah ta'ala, in the future. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told us those who maintain the masjid, those who come to the masjid, who they are. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us, before I talk about the role of the masjid, I'm going to talk about the importance of the masjid. The masjid is very important in the Muslim, in the Muslim's life. Anyone who is a Muslim, your life evolves around the masjid. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? أَحَبُّ الْبِلَادِ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَسَاجِدُهَا Look at this hadith. The Prophet ﷺ has said, the best places that Allah loves more than anywhere else is the masajid. Right now, my brothers and sisters in Islam, we are in the masjid. We are in a place that Allah loves more than anywhere else in the world. This is the place to be. In Toronto tonight, the place to be, and the place to be at this time is the masjid. But if you are in a restaurant, if you are in a house, if you are somewhere else, you are not going to get the same reward as the people who are in the masjid right now. Any masjid around the world, the people who are in it now, they are better than other people because they are in the masjid. They are in the best of places. And the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also said, مَنْ بَنَا لِلَّهِ مَسْجِدًا بَنَا اللَّهُ لَهُ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ Look at this is the importance of the masjid. If you build a masjid, anyone that builds a masjid, 
for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did Allah promise them? A house. Imagine if the Canadian government tonight says, anyone who donates that much money or any type of money to this project, we are building something. To this project, anyone that donates that towards that project, we're going to build them a house. We will, do, we will build a house for them. Just a two-bedroom apartment, that's it. How many of us would have been donating all day? Everyone would be going and saying, where is that place? I want to donate $10. I want to donate $20. I want to donate $100. I want to donate $1,000. We would be donating all day. But who is making the promise right here is Allah. Allah is the one who is saying, if you build a, a masjid for me, for the sake of Allah, I will build the house for you in paradise. And what is the house of paradise? What is it made of? Is unbelievable. Yes. Exact gold and diamonds and everything. Do we know the size of the house of paradise? Allahu A'lam. Allahu A'lam. When Allah says, I'm going to build a house for you, that house, only Allah knows how beautiful the house is going to be. Only Allah knows how big that house is going to be and how pleasant that house is going to be. Only Allah knows. But if we were promised today, just as if we build something or if we take part of a project, we will be getting something back from the government. We would be doing it all day, all night. But Alhamdulillah, my brothers, this is the offer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us. If you build a house for me, and even the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned in another hadith, even if it is the size as where the, where the bird gives birth, where the, the, uh, and the egg of the, the, the birds where they hedge that that's that's how even if the the house that you're going to build is that small the house of allah that you want to build that if that is only if it's that small that's the amount of ajr you're going to get allah is going to build the house for you so alhamdulillah we have many many great opportunities to do this also the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned to show the importance of the masajid what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said man ghada ila al masjid aw raha a'adda allah lahu nuzulan fil jannah what did the Prophet ﷺ have said? The person who goes to the masjid during the day, during the morning, and he goes to the masjid during the afternoon, what will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepare for them? Allah is going to prepare houses for them in paradise, a place to live. This is the beauty of coming to the masjid. This is how, this is how blessed we are whenever we come to the masjid. Whenever we visit the masjid, a house is going to be built for us. Allahu Akbar. Where on earth can you get this offer from? No, from no other, for, from no any other place. This is only an offer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives and he will give it to you if you go to the masjid. This is the beauty of the masajid. And also, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, أَعْظَمُ النَّاسِ أَجْرًا فِي الصَّلَاةِ أَبْعَدُهُمْ مَمْشًا فَأَبْعَدُهُمْ what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in this hadith? The people who will get the greatest reward in Salah are the ones that live the furthest away from the masjid. So brothers and sisters, if you drive to the masjid 20 miles or 30 miles and you come to the masjid to pray, do not think what you are doing is not worth anything. It is worth a lot. So the people that live only a few hundred meters away from the masjid, they will not get the same ajr as someone who drives from 30 miles away from the masjid. This is the ajr. And also the companions that wanted to move next to the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when they heard the reward that they will get by coming far away from the masjid, what did the companions, what did they do? A whole family, a whole tribe wanted to move next to the masjid of the Prophet at the time of the Prophet. But when the Prophet heard that this family is going to move to the masjid, next to the masjid, or near the masjid, what did the Prophet say to them? He reminded them about the ajr they're going to get if they come from that far, all the time when they come to the masjid. So when they heard that, look at the companions, they have said to the Prophet, we have canceled the plan. We are not moving next to the masjid. Khalas, we're gonna stay where we are so we can get the ajr. This is, this is how beautiful the masjid is. This is the amount of ajr we get whenever we travel and come to the masjid from further places. Also, the beauty of the masjid is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to travel. And when he comes back from traveling, where was the place that he would visit first? 
it used to be where? Before he even goes to his, masjid, to his house, he would come and visit the masjid. This is the beauty. This is a great sunnah. But how many of us actually practice that? How many of us? Very few of us. We travel a lot. We might go to Ottawa, Montreal, whatever, Calgary, and then we come back to Toronto. When we come back to Toronto, we can't wait to get to the house. Subhanallah, I'm coming within the next five minutes, and then we are straight away to the house. Maybe the masjid is next to the house, to the, to, the masjid is next to your house, but you will not visit the masjid. But look at this sunnah, the Prophet wasallam. he would visit the masjid before he visited his house. This is a beauty, this is the beauty of the masjid. Also, the Prophet wasallam has mentioned there are certain mosques that are better than other mosques. Certain masjids are better than other masjids. Which are the top three masjids in the world? Yes, and what's your name, brother? Abdullah, yes. Bayt al Quds is one. Give me another one. The Prophet's Masjid. And what's the last one? Mecca. Excellent, mashallah. The young brothers are answering the questions. Which one is the best out of the three? Yes, Ammar. Masjid al Haram. Who can tell me what ajr you're going to get for praying there? Yes, and. Uh, So when you pray in Mecca, you will get how much more? A thousand more. A thousand times more. Who can answer? Yes, there's someone else. Who... Hundred thousand. That is the correct one. Yes, mashallah. What's your name? Yusuf, yeah? Mashallah. Excellent. But the Yusuf got it right. When you pray in Mecca, you will get hundred thousand reward. One hundred thousand. Imagine when we pray here. Compared to when we pray in Mecca, 100,000. 100,000 salah. Subhanallah. And the other thing that you have in Mecca is every time that you pray in Mecca and you finish the salah, the obligatory salah, there is salatul. Always there is another salah that comes. Salatul janaza. You will not get it much here. Do you? Here, if you pray salatul janaza once or twice or three times a year, that's two minutes. But in Mecca, every salah, after every salah, you will pray Salatul Janaza. And imagine when you pray Salatul Janaza in Mecca, it will be times 100,000. And what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi what did he say? When you pray Salatul Janaza, you will get the same reward as the mountain of Uhud. And who has seen the mountain of Uhud? The people who have seen the mountain of Uhud, when they went to Medina, they haven't seen the full mountain. You've only seen the front part of the mountain. But if you go around the mountain, it will take the car, how many minutes? Allahu A'lam. To go around the, that mountain. That's the amount of ajr you're going to get when you pray Salatul Janaza. Look at the amount of reward, how generous Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is. But where can you find this ajr? In the masjid, nowhere else. Not in the parliament, not in, in a community house, not in anywhere. Just the masjid. The masjid, is, this is what, the, the value, the value that we are talking about, the only place you can get it from is the masajid. No other places. And the Prophet wasallam, he said, the only masajid that we can travel to, these are the three masajids. Baytullah al-Haram in Mecca, the Masjid of the Prophet and Aqsa. These are the only masjid that we can actually prepare ourselves and travel to them and go to them. When we go to Medina now, do we actually make the intention of traveling to the grave of the Prophet or we make the intention of traveling to the mosque of the Prophet? Which one? Mosque. Yes, we cannot have the intention of traveling to the grave of the Prophet. We have to have the intention of what? Traveling to the mosque of the Prophet The Prophet did not say travel for my grave, but he said travel, make traveling, and travel for the sake of visiting my masjid. But not, he didn't say come and visit my grave. But he said make the effort, prepare yourself, and come to my masjid. This is very, very important point to note. Also, my brothers and sisters in Islam, in the masjid of the Prophet there is a place which is called Ar-Rawdah. What is it called? Ar-Rawdah. This is a very special place. Where is this place, particularly in the masjid? Yes, Ammar? It's between his member yeah. and, his, and his, uh, 
Mashallah, Ammar, clever. That's what I, yes, I know Ammar, Masha. What's your second name, Ammar? Ammar. Only Ammar? What's your, your surname? What is it? Ali. Ali, Ammar Ali, Mashallah. He answered that question correctly. The Prophet ﷺ said that it is Rawda min Riyadh al Jannah, a garden from the gardens of paradise between my house, the room of the Prophet that he used to live with Aisha, and the member of the Prophet ﷺ, so the pulpit. So if you pray there, it is as if you are praying in paradise. That's the beauty. Where can you get this? The only place you can get this from is the masjid. The masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. This is how beautiful the masjid is. Now we're going to talk about the role of the masjid. Islam has valued the role of the masjid. And who, how do we know that? From the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. When the Prophet ﷺ, when he left Mecca, to go to where? To Medina. Where did he go first? He went to a place called, it's known as Quba today. But at that time, there, was, there used to be a tribe that used to live there, Bani Amr ibn Awf. Bani Amr ibn Awf. That tribe that used to live just outskirts of Medina, outside of Medina. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before he went to the main city of Medina, he stayed in Quba. He stayed where? In this place. Where he stayed, he stayed only there for a couple of weeks. But those couple of weeks, what did the Prophet do? As soon as he... He, he built the masjid, masjid Quba. He has built the Masjid Quba. Look how important this is. The Prophet, when he got there, he did not say, I was traveling for many weeks. I am tired. I can't... I need to relax. I need to sit back. The Prophet, as soon as he got there, he has built the Masjid. Because the Prophet knows the importance of the masjid, the role of the masjid. It brings the community together. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he finished building that masjid, he left and he went to the main city. And when he went to the main city, what was the first thing he did in his sirah? He has built... What's that masjid called? Masjid and Nabawi, mashallah. He has built Masjid and Nabawi, the Masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And that Masjid is a thousand times better than any other Masjid, except the Masjid al-Haram. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he has built that Masjid. And that is where the brotherhood of the Muslims, the brotherhood of the companions, that is the place where it was established. That's where it was established. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he knew how important the masjid was. The role of the masjid is bigger than the role it is today. The masjid had a great value at that time. It had many, many roles. The Prophet wasallam, as soon as he has built the masjid, all the Muslims, all the companions used to be there. That was where the whole state, that was where the whole state used to be run from. The masjid was the center point. It was the centerpiece for everything. The Prophet wasallam. The mosque, he used it as the headquarters for the whole government. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it used to be, the mosque used to be the place where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informs the companions about everything, about his policy, about the changes, everything. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used the masjid, he used the masjid as a place of education. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he was the leader of the Muslims as soon as the Prophet has passed away. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away and Abu Bakr became the leader, where was it the place that he gave that famous speech? He did it in? In the masjid. So the masjid was the place for the Muslims to come together and meet. Look how many Muslims we have in the masjid tonight. We are from different backgrounds. We have different professions. We are, from diff we, are, we are from different ages. Some of us are old. Some of us are young. Some of us are tall. Some of us are short. But we are all together in the masjid. We are all together in this masjid. This is the only place that can unite us. This is the place of unity, the masjid. This is the centerpiece. There is no other place that we can unite. But the masjid is the place. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he understood this. He knew the reason. He knew why the mosque was so important. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has established the brotherhood between the companions. Some of the great companions who became brothers in Islam and left a great legacy for us, 
For example, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, who was his brother from Ansar? Who's going to raise his hand? Yes, Yusuf? Sa'ad ibn Rabia. Sa'ad ibn Rabia, beautiful. Sa'ad ibn Rabia, we know what he did, what he said, and what he offered to Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. Where is this brotherhood? Where is the only, this is the only place that we can establish brotherhood. Brothers and sisters, look at the people now that you know. The people that you love most are the people that you have met in the masjid. The people that you know them at work, the people that you know them from college, the people that you met them from, from the university. You, don't, you like them, but you don't like them the same that you like the people that you met in the masjid. When you meet your brother Ahmed in the masjid, when you meet your brother Hamza in the masjid, there's a special place for them in your heart. Because whenever you see them, you feel happy. How are you, Brother Ahmed? I missed you these days. And if he doesn't come to the masjid two days, you're going to miss them. But your friend at work, if he doesn't come to work how many days, you don't really care that much. Okay, but the brother that, that you met in the masjid, if you miss him two, three days, you're going to get worried. You're going to say, I want to see my brother. Where is he? Is he sick? The sister that you met in the masjid is exactly the same. This feeling, the recipe, the beauty is from the masjid. It's not from anywhere else. It's only the masjid. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he made the brother the Muslims from from Muhajirun and also from Ansar brothers and sisters in Islam in the masjid. Also the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to take care of the poor in the masjid. Ashab al-Sufa, the companions who were an immigrants who came from outside Medina who had no houses no 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 money at all. Where did they used to stay? They used to stay in the masjid. And the people who are needy, when they come to the Medina, they would come to the masjid. And the Prophet ﷺ would stand up in the member and he would say to the people, we have, needy, we have needy people with us, please gather your wealth together. And we know the famous story between Umar and Abu Bakr. Umar, he said, I used to compete. I used to compete with who? With Abu Bakr. He said, one day the Prophet said to us, Everyone, please donate. We have needy people in the masjid. Bring what you have. And then what has happened? That day, Umar, he thought, this is the opportunity to beat Abu Bakr. So Umar, he went back to his house. He looked at how much wealth he has. And then half of his wealth, he brought it to the masjid. Abu Bakr, Umar, he said, I came to the masjid. I brought half of my wealth to the Prophet and I gave it to him. He said, I was feeling proud of myself that day. I thought Abu Bakr is not going to do the same. He's not going to bring as much as this. And then he sat down. He said, I was waiting for Abu Bakr. What he brings to the masjid. And look at, look at what Abu Bakr did that day. Abu Bakr, he brought to the masjid everything that he owned. Everything that he owned that was possible to give away. Everything that he owned that was possible to give it to someone else. He brought it to the masjid. And then the Prophet said to him, what is this? He said, this is all I had. And Umar was sitting there. He heard that. Umar, he said, from that day, I did not try to compete with Abu Bakr. How many brothers do we have in this masjid who compete for the khair? You will see it tonight, inshallah. I know there is rivalry in the masjid, especially in terms of giving. But tonight, inshallah ta'ala, we will see who will be the champions, inshallah. So it's very, very important, my brothers. Abu Bakr and Umar, where were they trained? They were not trained in a university or somewhere. The university that they have graduated from was the masjid. Abu Bakr, the greatest, one of the greatest leaders of Islam. Umar ibn Khattab, where, where did they graduate from? Did they graduate from Harvard University? Did they graduate from Oxford, Cambridge? They did not graduate from those universities. They graduated from the mosque. Our kids, wallah, if we trust the masjid, if we trust our mosques, and we do and use our masjid to the potential that the masjid has, wallah, our kids can become everything. They can become the greatest of people. But do, we do not trust the masjid. We say, I would rather educate my child in a public school. But if we use the masjid the way we should be using it, we can actually educate the future leaders of, of, of Islam from the masjid. Look at the generations before us. They used to be educated in the masjid. But unfortunately today, we run away from the masjid. The further away we can stay from the masjid, the better that we feel. 
Unfortunately, that's a very unfortunate thing. But now, inshallah ta'ala, we need to bring back the value of the masjid. We need to bring back the value of the masjid. And the masajid in the West, alhamdulillah, they're trying to do their best. They're trying to do their best in terms of doing different things in the masjid. So inshallah ta'ala, my brothers, as we have said, the masjid was everything at the time of the Prophet If we need to hold a wedding, the wedding ceremony used to be in the masjid of the Prophet But today, when we have a wedding, do we do it in the masjid? No, a five-star hotel. The sister is going to say to you, what? If, you say, if the brother says, our walima, everything is going to be in the masjid, the party is going to be in the masjid, the sister is going to say to him, you must be joking. You are absolutely a joker. Why? Subhanallah. Do you know my friend such and such? She went to Hilton Hotel, Holidays Inn. That was her part. That's where the party took place. Even if the sister tries to be, mashallah, practices sister and she says, okay, I don't mind going to the masjid, the mother is going to get upset. The mother says, what? In the masjid? Subhanallah, are you dead? La. Is this your janazah or your wedding? No, no, this is absolutely my wedding. Subhan, how can you say we're going to do the, uh, the wedding in the masjid? Only the janazah. When we die, we're going to go to the masjid. But not before that. Okay, we're going to go to Hilton tonight. Nowhere else. This is the problem, my brothers. But the, at the time, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the wedding used to be in the masjid. This is how we need to bring back the masjid and give the masjid the value it deserves. Wallah, there is a lot of barakah when we have our weddings in the masjid. It makes me feel so proud back in Sheffield. Alhamdulillah, some of the young brothers and sisters, they do have their weddings in the masjid and there is barakah in that. But the brothers and sisters that go away from the masjid and they have five-star hotels and things and they spend so much money and they do israf, after a couple of weeks, they're coming and knocking the door of the imam. Salaamu alaykum, Sheikh. What is, yeah, he's coming. What's the problem? We have a major problem. What is the major problem? Me and the, the missus, we can't really understand one another. We don't relate to one another. Where did he st and then the, the simple question is, where did he start from? We, we did start from Hilton Hotel. That's the problem. You didn't start from the masjid. If you started from the masjid, it would have been okay. I can't solve the problem right now. Because if you had the, the wedding in the masjid, I could solve the problem. But if you had the wedding in Hilton, you should go to Hilton manager and say to him, we have a problem, sir. Okay, fix it. He will say to you, this is not my problem. Okay. And you will have no one else to fix it. This is the role of the masjid, my brothers and sisters in Islam. So we have to remember the masjid. Wallah, I wish I had extra time, but I've been told I got to stop. And if I have to stop, I have to stop. Barakallahu feekum. Until we see you next time, let us have our weddings in the masjid. Okay?